you can see where it's coming from there. Um, low kind of a crusty area to the right of the transmission cooler line that's going into the radiator. Well, hey guys, what is up? It's Patrick from One Life Journey, and it is January 2016. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, as you can see in the background there, the uh, the van is up on well, one jack stand anyway. And as you may have seen in the last clip, um, my radiator started to leak while I was down in Southern California. Um, and it's been actually leaking for a while. Uh, I've been smelling it, but just it's not been leaking a whole lot, and I haven't been able to trace where it's coming from. There's been no drips or anything like that. So I found it, and I ordered a radiator, um, and let me show you what I'm up to. Uh, this isn't going to be really a how-to. I'm just going to kind of tell you what to expect and uh, my recommendations. Um, so, so first of all, uh, here's the here's the old radiator, and this is the engine side here. And it's kind of hard to tell, but it was it's, they all leak. Apparently, the all the OEM Toyota radiators tend to leak in this upper uh, upper corner here. Um, so that's where the leak was from. It really wasn't a whole lot. It was just kind of you know, seeping out a little bit. I saw wetness in this area here. Um, be aware when you replace this radiator, it also has a transmission cooler. So you just have to disconnect the lines um, and catch the fluid coming out and then put the same amount of fluid back in. Um, so that's what I did. And little, It really wasn't much. It was um, maybe a quarter of a quart. Um, so I have that all measured out in a Tupperware container and then I'll put the exact same amount back in. Um, and then measure it, of course. Um, so anyway, this is the old radiator that came out and it really doesn't look like it's all in, uh, in, in that bad of shape. Uh, it's an all aluminum design and from my research, um, what happened is these radiators, all the Toyota radiators will leak in this corner here over and over and over again. So they actually replaced it with a uh, plastic end cap design. Uh, and that includes uh, both of the radiator fans, and uh, it's, it's a, basically a drop-in design. But let me show you some of the issues that I've had um, installing this thing. Uh, hope you can hear me over the lawnmower. Maybe I'll wait a second for it to die down. Okay, so as you can see, the new radiator is almost in. It's basically just sitting in the, uh, in the clips here. Uh, so let me show you what to expect um, when you install these things. First of all, you're going to have to take uh, most of the air cleaner parts out here. Uh, there are a couple of snorkels, I guess you'd call them. Uh, these are the transmission cooler lines that I just have in a plastic bag so they don't leak or, uh, you know, contaminants because I had to let it sit overnight. Didn't want any contaminants getting in there. Um, of course, you got to take both radiator hoses off. I got the bottom one connected there. Shouldn't be a problem. The pain in the ass design, and here's here's where, really where it's a pain in the ass. You have, uh, I believe it's called the core support, the, the top bracket here. You have to remove this to get access to both the radiator and the condenser. I believe this is the condenser. And they're sandwiched together. And that's not too bad uh, unless you don't want to disconnect the AC lines, kind of like I'm doing. So what you have to do is you have to take the course, the top bracket out. You have to disconnect the latch for the hood. Uh, all the wiring needs to, to become, uh, you need to disconnect all the wiring. And um, through some finagling, I was able to lift it up and out enough to where I could undo. There's bolts. You see there's two bolts on the top here for this sandwich bracket and two bolts here for this one. Um, and there's the same thing on the bottom with these locating pins and you, you basically have to lift it up, lift it up and over just enough to where I could get access to the bolts. And my car is from um, the DC area so it went through a couple of winters and uh, those bolts were cr quite crusty and I don't know if you can see the one in the front there but I was not able to get either one of these out. So what I did is I was able to get the top ones out and I was able to bend it just enough to where I could unsandwich these um, uh, the condenser and the, the radiator um, so I noticed that these were also quite crusty and on the bottom uh, the these actually these little clips here kind of they snapped um, so I had to go to Home Depot and I tried to find some that would uh, be the same pitch and thread as the um, the ones I took off and especially I wanted this kind of uh, the hex nut the, the bolt design they didn't have anything so I just had to get what they had so I got similar clips and um, I believe it's M10 
number 1024 um, and then I got some flat washers and then some just regular screw um, bolts here for the, for the top and for the bottom it's the same thing and uh, hopefully that'll hold uh, without an issue because yeah I, these were quite crusty and I, I didn't have enough to go around so I had to go to Home Depot um, for all of you playing along at home uh, this is the speed nut for the bottom I got some number 10 flat washers and some 10 by 24 round head round head something or others anyway so yeah kind of a pain in the ass this job was supposed to take two hours and well I've never done it before and maybe Toyota mechanics know how to do it in two hours but it took me two hours to get this sucker out and it's probably going to take me another hour or two to get everything buttoned up and back together get the hood latch lined up and everything um, I do believe that this is a job that you can do by yourself in your driveway as I'm doing I've you know in my house here I've got the tarp on the driveway just to prevent uh, any stray spills or anything from staining the driveway but it's definitely something you can do by yourself uh, just take your time and try not to get too frustrated uh, if things are a little bit rusty um, as far as the radiator goes this is the spectra premium brand uh, I believe it's called and I saw a lot of high recommendations this was actually I got it off rock auto it was about two hundred and twenty dollars or something like that and uh, I, a lot of people spoke very highly of this radiator and I got it for two reasons one uh, there's two designs in Rock Auto one with the plastic end caps as I was uh, talking about earlier and the metal one here and if you cheap out and go with some of the um, some of the cheaper units uh, people are saying they don't fit or um, you know they'll, they'll have to replace them a year or so down the road and so I kind of knew what I was getting myself into so I said well I wanted it to fit the first time and I wanted the best quality radiator that I could get and I'm not being paid by them or anything I just read a lot of reviews so fingers crossed that this is the one uh, this is a good uh, brand a lot of people spoke very highly of this radiator um, also you know it's such a pain in the ass to replace just buy the best you can and do it once and forget about it um, and this van goes on a lot of road trips um, so I would really rather not have it fail on the road. Um, this total job, well, if I don't have to buy any more parts, right now I'm, I'm in this probably about $240 to $250. If I had to take a Toyota or a shop, it'd probably cost $700 to $1,000 to have the radiator replaced. So it's worth your time. Um, just take your time, do it yourself. Um, it's a pain in the ass, but it's worth it. So save yourself some money. And uh, as far as the coolant going back in, uh, I tried to catch as much as I could and uh, put that back in since it's not all that old. I uh, also got some more Xerox or however you, you say it, the Asian vehicle formula. It's supposed to be compatible with the Toyota, um, the red coolant. Um, so I ordered this off of Amazon. This was about $15 and uh, also had to get a little bit more transmission fluid. I got two quarts, but I will probably only need less than half of, of one of those. So, just being prepared uh, by having all the right coolants and fluids uh, so I'm not stranded and don't have to walk to the store to get some stuff. So yeah, I just want to show you guys what I'm up to. Um, luckily I had a fairly nice day outside here. It's about 50 degrees. And uh, yeah, before the rain starts, 100% chance of rain tomorrow. So I wanted to get this taken care of. So anyway, I'm going to get back to her, put everything together. And uh, yeah guys, thanks for watching. Till next time. Later.